Thank you and good afternoon everyone. So let's go to the agenda. Okay, so welcome introduction. Uh, we will see uh, the trends on, on the market. Okay, it works, thank you. And then uh, we will see the portfolio of IBM um, networking services in the ar area of uh, SDN and AV automation. And then uh, we will uh, get some uh, case uh, studies if we have time. So first thing is about the no some numbers. So the statement we have today, so regarding um, uh, that the main majority of uh, the uh, change or even uh, provisioning uh, uh, processes are executed still manually, so without any automation, orchestration, or I would say templatization of the uh, configuration. And then, as you can see, the second number is about so more than 90% of the issues uh, we can get on the infrastructure are, are caused on legacy networks. So without virtualization, without SDN controller, without orchestrator, or even a service lifecycle manager. In the meantime, what we see is uh, incremental um, bandwidth usage, a number of uh, IP uh, on the internet uh, exploding, thanks to IoT uh, adoption and 5G as well. So we need to do something here. We need to adapt our uh, cloud infrastructure, so not only networking, but also storage and compute, uh, to be able to scale and to uh, fill with uh, our uh, end client uh, needs. So in that chart, what we can see is what we propose to uh, uh, transform. So this is what we can call the uh, cloudification of the infrastructure, move to cloud, infrastructure as code, uh, DevOps adoption in the cloud infrastructure. This keywords uh, come uh, uh, there. So from hardware-centric, uh, <coughs> PNF, uh, to uh, something that is uh, uh, software controlled, then from, uh, as we introduce from manual operation via CLI or even via dashboard to uh, something is, that is more using template and workflow to provision and manage the infrastructure. Uh, then the programmability is key, so this is what we will see uh, there because uh, thanks to uh, SDN, uh, NFV, so we got now a Northbound API, so we can really program the infrastructure, so what we, ca what we call infrastructure as code. And then the last notion here is really about a proactive, so using network insight, for example, as we, we do in our uh, solution. Uh, to uh, determine abnormally, even if we are below uh, predefined thresholds. So then we can act proactively before an issue occurs. So it's not yet machine learning here. It's more a network insight analytics by uh, correlating telemetry coming from different elements in the infrastructure. <clears throat> so what we see today as trend on the market and that fits with what we call uh, programmable networking uh, services, is first thing about uh, brokerage. So we see that uh, we can consume uh, connectivity as more a commodity service, and then that we can uh, put the value of our, our uh, services on overlay. Um, second thing is how we can, so that we need, I would say, not can, but need, uh, to uh, automate and orchestrate, to take benefit of the programmability, to industrialize the provisioning, and to enable automation. And then predictive insight, we have talked about that, so we think it's a uh, uh, must have here. And then security, so <clears throat> in different um, projects, we see that uh, security is a showstopper. So if security is not taken into account, so it's true for the SD branch, so SD1 without security. We have some experience there, I would say, on the market. But also uh, in the automation orchestration layer, when we use, uh, for example, command bus to uh, exchange data, so how secure are these uh, communications? So here you have um, 
the landscape of the uh, where we can uh, fit with the IBM networking services. So we have started in 2011 on uh, SDN data center, so mainly with uh, Cisco, VMware, and Juniper. Then we, so today, in that space, it's no more uh, private cloud only. It's uh, what we call multi-cloud. So we use the benefits of the SDN solution here to expand the private cloud to uh, multi-cloud. So via a notion of vPod or uh, virtualized uh, cluster, we can expand our uh, uh, private cloud infrastructure and use uh, overlay techniques to, to get, uh, I would say, a unique a private cloud infrastructure that is in fact hosted in a multi-cloud environment. But then so in 2016, we have started to work on SD1 project with our clients. And now well, what we see is the merging of SD1 and SDLAN, what we call SD branch. We see that in a RFI, RFP. So we need to address this branch transformation where the um, SD1 engine is one part of the complete solution. But then we need maybe security on the branch, so a virtual firewall to complement SD1. Um, uh, one optimization, Wi-Fi controlling, for example, in the branch. So it's a matter of uh, virtualizing the different components that are uh, today uh, physical devices, virtualizing the cabling between the elements with uh, service chaining, and then the, the last idea there is to uh, combine so with SD-LAN, so Wi-Fi access point uh, controlling, uh, as well as switching, switches. So on the left side, you can see uh, our, um, the portfolio in terms of services. So usually we start with workshop with our client. We try to define <coughs> uh, the, the concerns, define the target and then have a gap analysis to see what we need to do in the journey to, to achieve the, the target. So this is a consulting approach. So for that, we use a, a workshop. We use also labs where we can have use case demonstration. And then we go to POCs uh, naturally, I would say, in, a, in the next steps. So all our clients who wants to get a POC before a pilot before uh, uh, transition phase to, to production. So this is really workshop. We co-work, co-develop together, and then we uh, validate in POCs, even in, in IBM lab or in, uh, in premises, and we go to pilot and then to transition to delivery. Then uh, we have two approaches, project-based and managed services. So depending on the client request and, uh, and needs, we can run project services uh, steps, I would say, and stop on the run, and the client owns uh, operation uh, on, on the network. But uh, we can also uh, go to the uh, managed services uh, approach, where uh, IBM will take care of the uh, uh, management and day-to-day uh, -day operation. So we address uh, enterprise, but also tier two, tier three uh, uh, telcos uh, in that uh, services in that in that services, and then on the on the bottom you see that we have a, a cross uh, a solution that is called a cloud network intelligent control center, that is like. A, a solution that embeds uh, different things and, and we cover it later on, but we use it already in managed services and we propose it in, in project uh, services as well. So now let's go and have a, a better view of uh, this uh, scenic and uh, what we um, have put together. So I will skip some of the slide there. So what we have is uh, we have first a, a, a designer. So the designer in that solution is uh, the um, a dashboard. So we can do that using a graphical dashboard. We can use also uh, uh, directly some uh, YAML descriptor. So it's uh, Tos Tosca based, uh, Etsy uh, uh, compliant. And so we describe each service <coughs> and we describe the service chaining between services. So we can do that via, via comments or via coding. We can do that via dashboard. We can do that via uh, Northbound REST API. Um, so this is the first step. So here, this is a concrete example of something we have in production uh, with um, uh, SD1 engine on top of a UCP. 
uh, in addition, we have a firewall to secure internet access. So you have the network that is, uh, in fact, the OVS bridge between the physical LAN uh, uh, ports on the CP and the virtual network that connects to uh, the left uh, side of the SD1 engine. And then you can see uh, on the right interface connected to firewall, and we have a second interface hidden here that goes directly to MPLS, for example. So we describe that first. Then we need to describe the relationship and the dependencies we have between the uh, assembly, between the resources. And it's really mandatory here when we want to do automation, when we modify something in, on one side, we need to be sure that we understand what is the consequences for that part, but also for the other part that are linked. So in the service chaining, you see that we have dependencies, and we have also dependencies between the hardware that hosts the VNF and the VNF itself. So here it's where we describe these dependencies and this hierarchical level, let's say, between the components. Uh, on the, once we have the design done, so we need to test the design. So inside the, the solution, we have uh, what we call a behavior testing uh, uh, solution included. <clears throat> so we have a natural uh, language that can uh, provide a, a, a testing workflow here. And we use that to validate the behavior of uh, the, the, the component, the service itself, composed by microservice uh, chained together. Okay? Um, so here, usually, in that um, uh, behavior testing, we uh, include uh, testers. So it can be uh, VNF to simulate clients. Uh, so we, have, we are partnering with uh, some of, uh, um, I would say, a player in that domain. Um, but the idea is really to test the, the behavior uh, of, the, um, of the service and, and not only that the service is being, I would say, deployed successfully. So once we have best results, we can proceed to an automated deployment, but this is not what our clients used to do. So um, they prefer to have a manual operation to start the the delivery, the deployment of the project. But here we have, in fact, uh, the uh, validation of our design. And then uh, we will see in the transform part how we can visualize the telemetry, how we correlate this information. So it can be for SD1, SDN data center and multi-cloud area, and how we can automate uh, the deployment. So we have developed a central dashboard, unique dashboard, where we uh, correlate an, uh, a telemetry coming from the different uh, services. So for example, if we talk about SD1, we would need to correlate telemetry coming from the service provider, telemetry coming from the SD1 engine, for example. We need also to get information coming from the one optimizer, so it's helpful to see if uh, we have a gap between these elements. And if we have a gap, we need to determine how to remediate. Uh, here you have a more service-oriented dashboard. So for example, when we uh, focus on uh, uh, as a service, so when we consume as a service uh, uh, offering here, uh, we can have a view about the cost planning if we are in, in, in the range, if we exceed or not our cost planning. So it's not only a technical dashboard, but thanks to the uh, KPI, the telemetry, and the correlation we did, we do, we can really provide these kinds of informations. And then, so, so these are some examples of dashboard. Okay, just to give you an idea of uh, of what we we provide in that solutions. So then, when we want to industrialize the deployment, so again in SD one. So we have the workshop, the POCs to uh, validate the solution, pilot to see how it goes in production, especially the integration with the existing monitoring system, for example. And then we want to go to the industrialized uh, step where we will deploy massively SD1. And uh, one thing I forgot here is that we need to really take uh, to pay attention uh, about the integration between the sites that have been migrated and sites that are still legacy. So this is really something sometimes we forget to mention, but it's really a key in the, in the transformation uh, success. 
So here you have an example where we can industrialize the provisioning and we can deploy and simultaneously uh, several sites together. So you have the progress of each site and you have a view of the deployment. And then, so to be honest, this uh, graph is not so clear, <laughs> but so we can really uh, assess the circuit uh, so SLA provided by the circuit by so correlating information coming from different uh, entities. Uh, and, and so if we have a gap, we have an alert and we can get auto remediation or we can just get informational uh, messages uh, if needed, if we prefer. Then, so one slide regarding the orchestration engine inside the solution. So we are using a, a IBM solution that is called ALM, Agile Lifecycle Manager. That is a new generation of orchestration engine, not based on workflow anymore, but based on what we call intent base. So it's like a navigating system. So, so previously, we, we needed to, to design the whole workflow that uh, was executed uh, step by step. So it's like you, you predefine statically your path to go to your destination. And if something going wrong on the traffic, you are lost because you do not know how to do what is an alternate pace, uh, path sorry, if you have not pr uh, predefined that. So with the intent-based uh, uh, so, um, orchestration using a graph uh, solver uh, engine, uh, then we specify the target, so the intent. We specify uh, each uh, services by descriptors. And we also uh, uh, describe the uh, relationship and the dependencies between uh, them, as we have seen uh, previously. And so the system by itself will uh, identify the gap between where we are and where we want to go, and will identify uh, the action to remediate and go back to the target, like a, a navigation system. So all our uh, execution workflow are based on Ansible. Okay. So for example, we have a um, common process that is deploy VNF or deploy SD1 engine on a UCP, for example or deploy a DMZ as a service on a multi-cloud environment. And behind that, depending on the vendor we have selected, we will get this playbook to interact with Cisco ACI, this playbook to interact with, uh, with uh, Contrail, for example, or to uh, vManage, or to VCO for VeloCloud, etc. So we have worked with our partners to uh, uh, define Ansible playbooks for each uh, vendor we support. So we have uh, like an agnostic view on the dashboard, on the capabilities we have, and then the playbooks are really vendor dependent. So some of our views regarding the global uh, dashboard we provide. So as you can see, it's vendor agnostic. Uh, so we tried. So we have even some clients using different SD1 solution with uh, subsidiary, with acquisition and we can provide a unique view based on SLA we want to, uh, to, uh, to achieve. Even if it's behind that, we have different technical solutions, okay? <clears throat> okay, so it's another um, a view of the KPIs per site. Okay, so one point here uh, I think it's important to notice is the network insight. So we have uh, included in, in the solution a uh, network insight from Netcool here. So this is really useful when uh, we have uh, abnormality in the uh, telemetry we received, but we are still under alert threshold. So as you can see on the top, you can see the red line that is the alert threshold. And we can see here that we have abnormally that has been identified in red. So we are still below the threshold. There is no issue, there is no impact detected, but it's an anomaly because we compare with a historic base, for example, and we say, okay, this, this should not happen. So here we can detect, in fact, an issue even if before it occurs, and we can remediate it thanks to the graph solver in the orchestrator. Then there is a notion, a notion sorry, of auto-healing. 
uh, that is really important as well in, in the uh, orchestraton, ILM. So the possibility we have to uh, define the uh, remediation process when we have an issue by microservice. So let's take a quick example. So not SD1 related this time. So uh, a DMZ as a service on the multi-cloud. So we have an uh, IPS uh, virtualized. We have a, a load balancer, a server farm deployed maybe in different location or in different public cloud. And we have the SDN that permits to get the overlay between the different locations, OK? So the thing is, uh, we define uh, auto link mechanism by microservice. So maybe IPS will have an issue not load balancer or not the web server farm. So we need to auto heal the IPS only. So before when we work on a, on, a, on a workflow, we impacted all the services in the workflow when we need to restart to update a workflow. So we add uh, very huge or uh, I would say dependencies. So now it's really um, better um, and, and we can not impact other services inside a, a global service and auto heal have a remediation process for one microservices that is part of the other service chain. So we have northbound and southbound uh, APIs. Okay, so northbound we use to in, in integrate our, uh, our partner solutions, and uh, southbound we use to interact with a monitoring system, for example, uh, with um, uh, our uh, partners uh, when we want to have network intelligence, network visibility, for example. So why IBM? So some uh, few words on, on that. So <clears throat> we are not networking vendor. We do not push a, a vendor uh, uh, specifically. So we are working in a ag ag vendor agnostic approach. Uh, so this is one differentiator. So we are uh, well positioned today in SDN data center in multi-cloud. And now we extend that the capabilities to SD1 and SDLAN as I, uh, we have seen. Um, so we are working now on IoT, so for specific industry, and uh, so Industry 4.0, with some use case using that platform, as well as uh, 5G for uh, edge computing, and how, uh, I would say, uh, compute node can be uh, far away from the controller, let's say. <coughs> uh, and I will uh, stop there for that. So. Then the next step, maybe, if uh, we can uh, be in touch together, it's to have a workshop session in our network innovation centers. So here, this is the list of our uh, alliances. Uh, uh, we have uh, uh, the solution in place in the, in the center, in the lab. And so we are using this lab to uh, uh, first uh, test and validate the integration or uh, templates as well. And the templates then can be uh, referenced and used for multiple clients. So we do rep replicability and reuse. But they are also extensively used during POCs. Uh, so we have free centers. And so we can use uh, multi-site on the POCs as well. So you are still welcome to uh, visit us on the booth, IBM booth, the B1. As you may know, we have a very nice coffee shop close to us. So if you want to take a coffee, you are more than welcome. And, and that's it. So I thank you for uh, your, your time. And if you have any questions, maybe we have two or, let's say, one or two minutes for questions. Maybe not. OK. So Yes, so you can, we can see, uh, so we can meet um, later on, and you can uh, visit us on the booth. Many thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you.